We would like to meet you. There, sir. Message transmitted. Hopefully we hear back soon. Indeed, Private. Imagine our first contact without even meeting them physically has gone so well. Within a short period of time, we may be able to see them, after several drutspar of textual communication. Hard to imagine, sir, especially with our cutting-edge technology. Who would have thought that another species would be able to decode what we are transmitting via FTL without knowing our language? That is why you are here, to learn the first rule of diplomacy and tactics. Never underestimate the opposition. Sounds easy, but overdoing it leads to paranoia. Underdoing leaves you dead. Quite so, sir. Anyways, I'll keep watch over this. Continue on. Overseer Scottit calmly walks out of the room, leaving Brunt to monitor the state of the art antenna. To read the FTL comms background noise and pick up the signal coming from somewhere called Earth. Brunt, getting back to work, puts on the audio production device and starts to listen closely to the filtered noise for the telltale sign of communication. The sound of erratic yet known long and short tones interspersed with moments of silence. Listening closely, he hears the underlying hiss of the system and tries to stay awake. Hours later, he snaps awake as part of his mind picks up the chirps that had been ingrained in his mind since he was young, looking to the stars and the ships above. Quickly writing down what he is hearing, he then calls to the overseer again. We would like to meet as well. Where would you like to meet? Finally, a straightforward answer, and nice and short as well, Brutes announces out loud to no one in particular, reflecting on the massive dump of text that he received a couple weeks ago that resulted in him needing to have an operation done on his wrist after writing it out. What was that, Private? Sir! Brune jumps up upon knowledge of his overseer being in the room. They reply back, nice and short, and wanting us to choose a meeting place. Excellent. The best meeting place will be Brakika Fire's fourth planet. Nice and close and easy directions. It is in between two pulsars with very set frequencies. Understandable, sir. Such a simple instruction cannot lead to any issues. Indeed. Here, I'll write it down and then you can hammer it out to them. Great. Meet us at Brekika 5, between the two pulses of frequency 5 Zoltons and 7.3254 Zoltons. Brunt quickly punches out the text and ensures the antenna does actually send it and goes back into his listening stupor, waiting for the next reply. Hours pass. Even more hours. Eventually more beeping arrives and Brunt writes out what is received. How long is a Zoltan? Brute, slightly flabbergasted, calls back up and Overseer Scottit arrives shortly after. What do they mean when they say how long a Zoltan is? It is exactly five fruitims. It is our oldest unit. We are communicating through literal subspace, and they cannot even understand our clock. Brute, calm yourself. It could be a minor misunderstanding. They may have mistranslated our units. Try transmitting the fruitim equivalent instead. Very well, sir. A Zoltan is exactly 5 Frutims, making the pulsars be 25 Frutims and 36.627 Frutims. More time passes. How long is a Frutim given that 5 of them equal a Zoltan? See? They don't know. Surely, for they have replied back with the exact same units and even got the ratio correct. I'll go find the unitary dictionary and see if that will help. The Overseer heads out and returns shortly to see Brunt staring despairingly at the note. I have returned with the dictionary, here, just in the actual definition. The rights of this did a much better job than what I could try and paraphrase it as. Brunt takes the dictionary and starts relaying it through the antenna. Zoltan, the smallest non-fractional unit of time measurement set to be the exact rotational period of Jera's pulsar. After punching this out, Brunt looks intently at the definition again, feeling that something is off. Going back into his listening stupor, he constantly turns over in his mind that something seems quite wrong. Where is Jared's pulsar? Oh no. Circular reference. Overseer? Overseer. What is it this time? Last time you yelled for me, it turned into an interstellar incident. Those headlines are still some of the most sought after papers ever. We have a problem. There is a circular reference to our reasoning. The time is based off the revolution to Jared's pulsar, but the only way to tell them what Jared's pulsar is, is to tell them the frequency, which, again, is based off the revolution of Jared's pulsar. 
That is... no... well... You are right, it is circular. That is not good. What about... no. Uh, that is the same thing. Well, uh, ask them. Okay, but the likeliness of them doing something is quite unlikely. But at least we can try. The only way to identify Jair's pulsar is by its frequency. We just realized that our entire system is circular. If you can come up with a meeting place that we can meet at, please let us know. Before Brunt can even get back into his stupor, a new message arrives. How good is your science? What do you mean, how good is our science? We are communicating to them over FTL comms, which only has a purpose if you are spacefaring. If they really wanted to, they can give us several drispa, and we would create a time unit to share. Patience, Private, again. That is why you are here. Maybe they have an idea. Really good. FTL communications, interstellar FTL travel, multiple other species contacted and alliances. That should clear it up. A few more fruitings pass, and suddenly, a great wall of text is sent. We have a unit that is designed to be deduced from nothing. It is called the Second. To find its length, get a small amount of the 55th element, cesium. Purify it to attain solely the one whose core weight, 133 units. Then call it to absolute zero temperature. The frequency at which it changes between the two lowest energy levels, hyperfine ground states, is set to be 9, 192, 631, 770 a second. Counting that number of cycles is by definition the length of a second. What? What is it? They answered already. Really? Yes, and their definition. We need some physicists, but we know exactly how long this time amount is. In fact, it is likely we have everything we need in this glass of water. Let me see that. The overseer pushes Brunt out of the way and quickly scans the document. After reading, he leans back and shakes his head incredulously. What is the matter, overseer? Nothing. Just that I think we both learn not to underestimate the other side again. True, still have not stated where to meet. True, but they probably want to hear that we received this already. While leaning over to write out the reply message, Bruant immediately snatches the pen back from Overseer Scottit as the antenna starts beeping again. Also, we are to be sending another message shortly for a test. As soon as you get it, reply back. Do not wait for the entire message. It will only be A. That is a little rude. Not to wait for a reply? Yes, it is, but there may be a method to their madness. Wait for reply, send back the A, and ask what it was about. Yes, sir. Several fruitums later. A. A. What was the purpose of that? We are able to communicate no issues before. Why are you checking individual letters? No reply is heard from many fruitums. Eventually, a reply is heard. Okay, so we now know which direction you are in, and how far away you are within a small area of uncertainty. From this, we can say that the best meeting spot would be between the pulsars that have frequencies of 7.256 cycles per second, hertz, hertz, 0.4587 hertz, and 0.0145 hertz. The system to meet in inside this triangle would be the one that is twice as close to 7.256 hertz as compared to the others. That was fast, and quite accurate. Indeed. They must have had to communicate to another species before. The accuracy on these measurements is outstanding. To think, using something so common, it can be found in water to determine the definition of time. It is simple and genius simultaneously. And not only were they able to communicate the pulsar location, but the location of the system inside the area. Quite so. I'll leave you to fleshing out the details now, as I see that you are getting the idea of not underestimating others. Brunt leans back in his seat, satisfied that he is finally doing a good job, and marvelling at the accuracy of these others' capacity of telling time. Going back into his stupor, he is calm and relaxed. Beep, 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 beep. As it seems that you do not have time based on an inherent property, please see the following describing distance unit meter. It is defined by the speed of light in a vacuum, where light will travel 299,792,458 meters in one second. A standard human, who you are talking to, is roughly two meters tall. Outstanding. 
They were able to predict what info we would need next and provide it to us, and they have these units ready to use. Thank you for this unit. Also, how many other species have you met by communication only? You have units solely defined based on constants across space, and they are easy to work with. It will take time for our scientists to build these machines to make these measurements though, but they are going to be more accurate than what we have already. You may have redefined time here. Brunt taking a short break after writing out this message, massages his wrist from the amount of letters punched out to transmit that. Just as he is relaxing, more beeping. We have met no other species by communication only, and only one other species. How is that possible? Why would your base unit be set upon these constants otherwise? Long ago, some people decided to redefine measurement on a more accurate system. It was decided to make these based on natural phenomena, rather than royal decree or physical prototypes. This was made to correlate with the thought that the world can be explored by anyone, and everyone can add to it. This started off with the meter, and slowly all units of measurement were added, so that no one owns the meter. No one can change the meter on a whim, and its length is fixed, as its measurement to a more accurate level boosts how precise it can be measured with. The meter and all correlated units are set, and given the definition and enough time, anyone can determine anything to this common system no matter what. No worries about war destroying them, nor rust and time decay, nor others who think they are better than themselves and want to change it. They are permanent, and probably the most scientifically human thing about us. To learn, to understand, to determine the most pure absolute about anything as possible, and to continue to improve on it.